What is going on, everybody? Happy Black History Month to all of our viewers and supporters giving us a watch th this week. Welcome back to part two of our month-long series where we dive into the history of hip-hop. We last left off talking about the origins of the culture of hip-hop and how the people of New York created the stepping stones of what um, stepping stones to what would be the four pillars of hip-hop as we know it today. Hope you all are excited for this week's episode as we will be covering one of hip hop's founding fathers and the feats that propelled hip hop into the glo into global popularity. Now, without further ado, let's get right into it. As the early 1970s roll around, a spark amongst the people going through said hardships and challenges was lit. The, the rising rates in criminal activity and economical divide due to segregation laws still impacting the people of color did not deter them in any way especially the younger demographic. In the Bronx, uh, they used to they use those same struggles as an opportunity to express themselves and get a multitude of communities in the area to come together as one. This all equated to a new culture being constructed and would form four distinct pillars that would define hip hop, DJing, rapping, graffiti painting, and breakdancing. All four of these elements came, would come together and form a new movement known as hip hop. As the culture continued in its early days, one of hip hop's most important figures came to push the culture forward. Meet Clive Campbell, AKA DJ Cool Herc by his stage name. Born on April 16th of 1955 in Kingston, Jamaica, he and his family would emigrate to the Bronx, New York in 1967, around the same time that people of color were struggling with racial and economical hardships in the city. He got his stage name from all the time he spent in the weight room at his local high school, and, and his big physique and popularity caused fellow kids to call him Hercules, which he would derive to Cool Herc. After he graduated, he would devote his time to DJing, and his first gig was at his sister's back-to-school party. Known as the back-to-school jam, he held on August 11th of 1973, the recreation room located at his apartment on 1520 Sedgwick Avenue would become a synonymous landmark for hip hop, marking the place where hip hop was officially born and would kick off the old school era as we know it today. Coming after that party, uh, DJ Cool Herc would continue to make an influence to, on the culture of hip hop. He, would, he developed a talent for mixing records and creating addictingly percussive sounds, which helped with moving the crowd at his gigs. He knew that mixing would help would help keep the crowd engaged, but the part that he was most interested in was the break section, during which the vocals would stop and he would let the beat ride for a bit, giving him an opportunity to engage with the crowd and get them hyped for the night. Developing these skills early, he was able to land his first major gig at the Twilight Zone in 1973. He became increasingly popular with the New York scene as his gigs were known to be really crazy, loud, action-packed, and incredibly fun for everyone in attendance. He was known for having the loudest system around. This would come at a cost, however, as his crazy parties would lead him to having a disconnect with the crowd. To solve this, he hired Coke LaRock, the first ever hip hop master of ceremonies, where he would engage with the crowd and get them hyped for whatever DJ Cool Herc was preparing for them. This was another important step for hip hop at the time. Now his career would start to plateau in 1977, but that's honestly not important. His influence was strongly felt in the city and the early hip hop scene at the time, inspiring up and coming artists such as the Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, for example. Known as one of the grandfathers of hip hop, DJ Cool Herc would continue on in life, starring in movies, being featured on various albums and, being, and starring in various concerts across the country. It was because of him that hip -hop, would, the hip hop movement took these massive strides in popularity, not just in New York, but on a global scale. Breakdancing was also starting to take a big impact on the streets of New York and would become so popular that it would become the focal point in break and dance center movies to come, as well as being um, displayed in public spaces and also malls, for example. The icing on the cake for this era, however, was with the release of the first ever rap song. Titled Raptor, Rapper's Delight by the Sugar Hill Gang, the group's hit song was a commercial success right out of the gate. The New Jersey trio, which composed of members Wonder Mike, Master G and Big Bang Hank saw their masterpiece become the first rap single to become a top 40 hit on the Billboard Top 100 and peaked as high as 36 in 1980. 
The song helped usher in a new wave of hip hop artists, rappers, dancers, and performers for that era, and was solely responsible for introducing the world to the culture of hip hop, serving as a cornerstone for the industry looking to put its foot in the world of high profile music. The song, would also, the song also represented another important evolution for hip hop, shifting the main focus from the DJs to the MCs, which is the main focal point of the new era for hip hop during the 1980s, the new school was born and it's making its presence. <laughs> 